Hello, and welcome to another episode of Something Something Chat Show. Excuse me, with Tom Jr. Jackson presents. After the show review, and or episode eight. So, before we begin, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's me know, let's me know that you care. Let's YouTube know that you're trying to build up this channel so it will be seen more. Win-win for everybody. Yay! Also, uh, check down in the description boxes uh, for the links to uh, some channels. Uh, check out the Post Geek Singularity YouTube page uh, that is moderated and uh, procured by the host, your captain, Robert Marabinette. And he has a huge allotment of things that he has done. Big list. You can IMDB him too. Um, he's a director, he's an executive producer, he's a producer, he's an editor. Uh, as a matter of fact, just recently by Kino Warber, they just released in 4K, The Usual Suspects, in pristine 4K position. And what's so special about The Usual, usual Suspects? Well, I'm gonna tell you, the special features on there have not been seen in over 20 years. What are you talking about, Tom? Well, I'll tell you what Tom's talking about. Robert Meyer Burnett and uh, Dave Parker co-host of Midnight Metal. Also, Dave Parker is a director, directed The Hills One Red, which you can buy now from the Shout Factory with over eight hours of Blu-ray features. Um, they worked on special features for The Usual Suspects, and they have not been seen in over 20 years. And they are now available on the 4K disc from, you, from Kino Lorber for The Usual Suspects. So check those out. And also, um, while you're there, while you're checking those out, come back to the Post Geek Singularity and check out uh, the many shows besides Midnight Metal. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Shows such as Midnight Musings with your captain, Robert Meyer Burnett, um, Leo Rockwell of the One Sixth Scale Man YouTube channel. Check that channel out, my folks, my friends. Um, and RM of the Positive Fandom channel. And also, there is uh, Let's Get Physical Media with Rob and his trash pan, his pet trash panda. Your favorite German, everybody's favorite German, Peter Bastian. That's right. Rob has a pet, Trash Panda. Watch the show, find out what that is. Uh, then we got Fully Articulated with Rob and Heel versus Babyface, also known as As. Then we have um, whining about movies. Whining about movies is where Rob and his girlfriend, his co-pilot, his ride or die, his lady, uh, Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, uh, watch a movie, and then they come to the uh, studio also known as the Rob Observatory. And they open up a bottle of wine, they tell you about the wine, and then they discuss the movie. Whining about movies is, is coming back Sunday, October, let's see here. October 30th, 
22 on the Post Geek Singularity YouTube channel. Check that out. It's a good show. And as a matter of fact, all these shows have playlists on the Post Geek Singularity YouTube page as well. So you can just check out past episodes of all these shows, the great shows. And as, and as a matter of fact, there's also the flagship uh, show of the channel, Your Observations with your captain, Robert Meyer Burnett, where he discusses a topic of the pop culture of the day. And um, RM, co-host of Midnight Musings, has a show on the Post Geek Singularity every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, called Ladies of the PGS. Watch it live. It's, about, it's an hour of a uh, show that uh, is about uh, embracing masculinity. But not only that, they talk about sci-fi, horror, Marvel, sex, DC, and all the pop culture you can think of right here on the post, well, not right here, on this channel, but on the Post Geek Singularity channel, you can check that out. So do that. And speaking of RM, she has her own channel, as I said before, Positive Fandom, where she does unboxings. She does uh, reviews, such as movie reviews, television show reviews, uh, out of the theater reviews, theatrical trailer reactions and reviews as well. Check that out. And she every Sunday she's got a show on her channel called uh, Sunday Brunch Live with her co-host Russell Whitfield. He's an author. Look him up on on uh, the Amazon and uh, check out some of his books. And that is every Sunday morning. Um. Oh, excuse me. 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. With a parlay, all the pop culture that's fit to parlay in a show. So check that out. Won't you? And also check out Twin Flicks as well. Twin Flicks is a YouTube channel that uh, discusses new releases of physical media. They talk about the differences of a 4K and the Blu-ray and how it looks good. If it looks good, if it doesn't look good, should you buy it as well? So check out Twin Flicks on the YouTube. And now on to After the Show Review, episode eight of Andor. What can I say about this show? This show has, it's a great show. And as I've said in many, many of my reviews, it's like a, a roller coaster. Slow, slow, slow. You get to your um, heist, goes down. Down, you go for the fallout. And now it's going back up because now Andor is in prison. And this is the fallout from Matt. Um, watching this episode, I kind of wanted to see more of him in prison and where that was going. I didn't want to see Mon Mothra and I didn't want to see anything on, his, on the other planet he was on or the rebellion, uh, the rebellion building up. As a matter of fact, I was sitting there uh, watching the show and I was thinking to myself that maybe they should have done a Mon Mothra show that was just um, all about her and the rise of the rebellion. I think that should have been done. I, I, I kind of wanted to see more of the prison stuff. I don't know why, but just this time I felt that. I mean, I love the show. Don't get me wrong. I, I really like it. But I just felt that Mon Mothra deserves her own show where you watch her rise and the rise of the rebellion as well and, and, the, and the rise of the, of the rebels. Um, will we get that? I don't know. Probably not. 
but I enjoyed this episode a lot. I think that um, it was another intense episode. Um, I think really there's an, as I said before, there's an uneasiness to the show. We know where the character Cassie and Andor is going to end up in Rogue One. We already know that, unless you haven't seen Rogue One. Then this will be a big surprise for you. But in the meantime, I think that watching um, watching this show, there's an uneasiness to it of not knowing what's going to happen. Because as I like to say, in life, you have three main steps. You have A is where you begin, B is the middle, and C is where you end up. So C is Rogue One. And B is the Andor show. And I don't know how this is going to lead up to Rogue One, how we see Andor get from where he is now to where he is in Rogue One. And even though we know where he's going to end up, there's that uneasiness and that tension, but it makes it so intense and really great viewing to watch on the show. And I enjoy that. I really, really do. I like the fact that I can watch this show and not have to worry about anything else. And and I like a lot of the Star Wars show. I'll be honest with you. I like Obi-Wan. I like the Book of Boba Fett. I love The Mandalorian. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I love it. But and, and if you don't like it, that's, that's your prerogative, that's your opinion, and I respect that. I respect that 100%. Just like I would hope you respect my opinion as well. But like I said before, these, this is just my opinion and you don't have to take it for granted. You don't, have, you don't have to watch this if you don't want to. But this is where I, I look at things. We are seeing this resurgence in, in, in Star Wars where it feels a bit more grown up, it feels a bit more political. It feels like the first time, no. Um, it feels like it's something that when you watch it, you know where it's going, but you don't know where it's going, but it just feels right. And it feels great and it feels grown up. And the action scenes are great. And this one had some action scenes, not a whole lot, but that's okay because everything doesn't have to be bang, 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 it, it, you can have the dialogue, you can have the uh, drama, the intensity and, and, and the emotion of the, um, the show. And I like that. I like that the show is slow. I like that it takes its time in getting to where it's going because when you see that, you know you're building your story. You're establishing your story right there. Hundred percent establishing that story. And you're getting to know the characters more. You become more invested in the characters. And so that, so that way, if a character gets killed, the fallout from that or the from watching that, you'll feel something and you'll get that feeling of, oh, I really like that character. Why did they kill that character off? Which they haven't killed anybody off yet that you like. I like that you have a caliber of actors on the show like Fiona Shaw 
Diego Luna, who is also a executive producer on the show as well. And I just like the show. I I like the Mon Mothra stuff of, of the political aspects of behind the scenes of the rebel of, of that rebel faction. The, the the seed is starting to open up and grow. And yet they drop the name of the of the emperor in, in, in the show as well. And I like that. Will we see the emperor? Hmm, I don't know. Um, would I like to see him? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. But then again, you know, the, the uh, creator of the show, Tony Gilroy, has come out and said, you know, they're not, you're not getting fan service with this. But then again, you know, he could be saying that. And then there could be a lot of fan service in the next uh, three or four episodes. There could be. I mean, what if he's saying that? So you're not anticipating it. So it comes as a surprise, you know? It, it, that could be it too. And if it's not, it, 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 there's not going to be any fan service. I'm fine with that as well. Um, I like the fact that it's a good show, good writing, good characters, good story. Um, I'm interested to see where the season ends up. And then I believe next season it becomes time jumps leading up to Rogue One because there are only going to be two seasons of the show. The show takes place five years before uh, Rogue One. Yeah. Well, I am excited to see what happens in episode nine, which will be our next episode uh, that we do here. Episode nine of Andor is coming up next Tuesday. Um, we have four episodes left. Episode nine, 10, 11, and 12. Four episodes left. But if you don't want to count episode nine, it'll be three episodes. Three. Three episodes left of it. So we shall see where this is going. And then we, and also there's um, that excitement of not knowing where it's going to go, you know? Well, I'm going to thank you all for watching. And again, You've made this an enjoyable you by you subscribing and watching and commenting on things. I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying the interactions. Please follow the show on Twitter at something underscore chats on Twitter. Or typing something something chat show. And it should show up. Some of the, the posts should start to show up. But in the meantime, I want to thank you all for watching. And as always, remember, no matter where you are, no matter where you go, who you are, there you go. We are all goof people. Thank you. And have a pleasant tomorrow, folks. We'll see you next time on After the Show Review, Star Wars Andor Episode nine until then i am your host tom jr jackson saying thanks for watching bye bye